Thank you. In 1996, thousands of vulnerable children lived in the streets of Bombay, plagued by illness and abuse. These children were left to fend for themselves in the city's slums. While many children's support services were in place, poor organization prevented social workers from pairing the children with the resources they so desperately needed. How could one young woman, the daughter of a prominent accountant, possibly address such systematic poverty? In his book, How to Change the World, Social Entrepreneurs, and the Power of New Ideas, David Bornstein describes six qualities of successful social entrepreneurs. Willingness to self-correct, willingness to share credit, willingness to break free of established structures, willingness to cross disciplinary boundaries, willingness to work quietly, and a strong ethical impetus. Using these principles, Gerald Bellamora, the founder of Childline Organization, not only addressed the challenges facing children across Bombay, but also created a social entrepreneurship framework, which helped impoverished children across the city, country, and the globe. After the death of her father, Gerald discovered he had been the anonymous benefactor of many children's charities. Inspired by his generosity, she decided to adopt his mission. After attending the New School for Social Research in New York City, she returned to India and became an instructor for the Tata Institute of Social Service Sciences. Many of her students worked as social workers in shelters around Bombay, which introduced her to children who have been living in the streets. While children's service organizations did exist to support these children, they were small and poorly organized. Consequently, Gerald began to give, giving her personal phone number to children in need for emergencies and was amazed by the children's willingness to call. She quickly realized that children or concerned adults needed to a call center to help them with problems like abuse and abandonment and illness. She founded the organization Childline with the objective of providing children with emotional support and pairing them with reputable organizations all over the phone. However, Drew faced many challenges in implementing her vision and had to self-correct on many occasions. After Childline's first year, they identified several mistakes in the organization and focused on correcting them. One of the most important changes was the development of standardized questions to ask the callers. Um, these included ideas such as specific location, um, the clothing of the child, and the time of the call. Additionally, Childline was originally intended just to assist children living on the streets who suffered from abuse. However, as the team gained um, experience, it quickly became apparent that they needed services that would address other things such as dysentery, tuberculosis, and AIDS. Um, Drew also was successful because of her willingness to share credit. In fact, Drew frequently acknowledges that her Childline team could not succeed in isolation. Rather, they had to rely on partnerships and collaborate with other organizations such as the Department of Tele Telecommunications and its civil servants in the form of Childline's um, advisory board. Childline also demonstrates a willingness to break free of established structures. To expand to the national level, Childline adopted a franchise structure with decentralized management bound by standardizing operation procedures. This allowed the group to expand quickly um, and gave regional managers the autonomy to serve the unique needs of their districts serving uh, using local resources. Drew's organization epitomizes the principle of cross-disciplinary work. Specifically, Childline works with the Department of Telecommunications, uh, government officials, healthcare workers, and thousands of volunteers. However, this did not mean that Drew received credit for all of her work. Um, despite the scope of her organization, Drew preserved through relative obscurity for a number of years, while police, health, and railway officials remained largely ignorant about Childline. Perhaps most importantly, Drew never wavered in her commitment to serving the impoverished, disenfranchised children that she set out to help. Uh, her empathy for these children was not only what motivated her to found Childline in the first place, but the author, David Bornstein, 
also argues that it's what made the Childline organization an enduring success. Today, Childline offers services ranging from therapy to job training and currently operates in 87 countries around the world. So how do we change the world? As the book title implies. In telling Giro's story, Bernstein concludes that all successful social entrepreneurship in initiatives, regardless of their objectives, employ the same innovative principles. By designing real solutions for real people and paying attention to the exceptional, we can all realize our ideas. In fact, Bornstein claims that changing the world may be as simple as institutionalizing listening. So when opportunity calls, you won't hesitate to pick up the phone. Thank you.